Hey everybody, today I want to go over something that I think a lot of us have experienced in the past. Generally when a new desktop environment gets an update, you'll see videos about it and you'll see features and things like that that are included in the desktop. But once you download a distribution that has that updated desktop, some of those features aren't there or they're hidden and you can't find them. That's pretty much because when you download a distribution, what they've done is taken that desktop environment and pretty much customize it the way they want it to be on their distribution. So you don't really get that vanilla feel that you've seen in videos or some of the things that you're expecting just aren't there. For example, when you hear about a new release of KDE, you can go over and actually download a vanilla KDE with KDE Neon because it's put out by KDE. Everything that they're advertising that's going to be there in the desktop environment will be available to see in this distribution. You can even download testing editions and unstable editions to see even newer features that are going to be included in a future desktop release and be able to use them and be able to use them in an operating system that you're using. You don't have to worry about a specific distribution taking that desktop environment and customizing it and you know, maybe hiding some of those features or making it harder for you to find them. Now, if we look at the new GNOME 43 release, right now you can get it on the Fedora 37 beta. But what if you just want to experience just what GNOME is updated and just what they're bringing out to people? Well, then this is what you do. You zip on over here to os.gnome.org and you can download what's called GNOME OS Nightly. Now, this is just basically for developers. This is for you to be able to download it to see all the new features that are included in GNOME 43. And then as a developer, you can make your apps work along with it. But at the same time, you're going to get a complete vanilla look at GNOME 43. And that's what we're doing today. Actually, right now, I am in GNOME 43, which is the GNOME OS Nightly. Now, there's a a caveat to this. You cannot run this in a virtual machine. You can install it, but you can't just run it in a live environment, which means I've put this on bare metal. I've put it on hardware and I'm recording this video in it. You actually have to install it, wipe the drive and actually install the whole operating system, which I have done. As you can see here, I'll bring this up. I've got OBS running on my second desktop and then I've got GNOME Web running right here open so I can show you the web pages. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of GNOME Web. Let's go ahead and do that. And then let's bring this back up. And if you download it and install it, this is what you're going to be looking at right here. One of the major features that they've been talking about with the GNOME 43 release is the new quick settings menu up here. Now, what's awesome about this is a lot of settings that you used to have to go and find in settings, you can get quick access to them right here. You've got your Wi-Fi right here, Bluetooth. You can set your night light and then balanced. You can adjust your power profile. Do you want it to be performance, balance, power saver? It's all accessible right here. You can switch over to dark mode right here. Let's go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, it switches right over to dark mode. And then of course, you've got your power lock. Then you can go over to settings from here. And then one thing I really like about this because especially when I'm doing videos or I'm doing promotions for the businesses that I work for. I want to take a screenshot of something real quick. I don't have to hit the super key to open anything up. I can just zip up here now and go screenshot and pick what I want to take a screenshot of, clip it, and it's there. I got my screenshot saved. Now, another thing they've done with this release is they've updated some of the things in your file manager. Now, if you just look at it, plain and simple, up front, it doesn't look like much has changed. But if you've ever resized this file manager in the past, you've had issues that it can get too scrunched up, for lack of a better word. But now, if you do that, as you can see, the menu on the left just disappears. But the beauty of it is, is if you're resizing windows and looking more than one window on a screen, let's say you got three or four open and you got file manager open, and you've got it positioned somewhere over like this, you can get to that menu from right here. You can go to Downloads, open those up, and you're in Downloads. So if you resize it, you're good to go right there. Another thing, if you click on this, 
You've got your show your hidden files, preferences, keyboard shortcuts, help, about files. And another thing I think is really neat in this release is if you've got a USB stick. Let me put, plug in a USB stick real quick. Be patient. I'm plugging it in. And now you've got your new volume right here. Let's say you want to format this. If you right click on it, it gives you the option to format from a right click now. It didn't do this in the past. And quite honestly, I didn't know it didn't do it in the past until I actually ran across something where I needed to do it. And I was so used to doing it with other distributions in the past that I just guess I just skipped over it. But you can right click. And one interesting thing is, is if you click on format, it'll go ahead and open it up right here. Now, if you are somebody that has to use Linux and cross back and forth between Windows 10 and Windows 11, it gives you the option now to actually format in NTFS. Now, I would always stick up here with EXT4 because I don't really cross-reference any of my data with Windows 10 or Windows 11 anymore. So it's not something I really have to worry about, but it is there if you need it. So I'm going to go ahead and just cancel out of this and close out of it. Go ahead and close out of this and really cover one of my favorite features on GNOME. I used to be a real harsh critic of GNOME because it seemed like it really took up a lot of space, took up a lot of resources, excuse me, when you ran it. Now, I do have OBS running in the background. So, what I want to do here real quick is I want to go ahead and open up System Monitor, and I want to see what kind of resources we're using. This was hovering at about 900 megabytes before I kicked OBS on. And right now, with OBS running in the background, I'm running at 2 gigabytes of RAM being used. And like I said, that's with OBS running in the background. Now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and open up, let's see, go to Utilities, and we're going to open up Console. And this is the new version of Console on GNOME 43. Now, this was released with GNOME 42, but the way that distributions customize the GNOME desktop, you may not have seen it on GNOME 42. So, it is here on GNOME 43. And... It was in the previous edition too, but let's go ahead and run a top. And right now it states that we're running about two gigabytes as well. So it's staying accurate along with what we were looking at a while ago. Now, like I said, when you do close out of OBS, it hovers around a gigabyte, which is pretty light to be quite honest, because in past editions of GNOME, just to be open on their desktop, I was running about 1.4, 1.5. So the GNOME team has done a good job at adjusting resource usage in this release. Plus, I think another thing you have to look at, when a distribution takes GNOME and they put it wrapped around their operating system, they're going to add extensions and things that they think need to be running there. And if they do that, it's obviously going to increase the resource usage. Me, as a user, I want it just bare, give it to me that way, and then I can add the things that I want to. Now, another thing I want to go over is... Let's say you're working. I, I have a bad habit of this. I'm going to go ahead and open up File Manager. And let's go ahead and open up the store. Sometimes I'll be working and I'll be like, man, I had File Manager open. What you know? If you're like me sometimes, you cover Windows up. You, you just get lost sometimes. Especially if you're like me and I don't actually tile them the way I should. We all are guilty of it sometimes. You know, you just hit the super key. And it brings it up and you can see it right there and you can get it right back real quick. I do like the way they do their dynamic workspaces. I think it makes things a lot easier. I've got two things open here. I've got OBS running over here. So, I mean, GNOME is definitely making things a little better in that realm. So, I'm going to go ahead and go back over here and close. And we'll close out of this. Now, I do want to cover another thing that they got in this one which is a brand new text editor. Let's go ahead and bring this up. Now, this is new, but it was in GNOME 42. But like I said, the way that distributions release their versions of GNOME, this may not have been there. So this is available in GNOME 43, and it's called Text Editor. They make it simple. They make it easy. Now, another thing you can come over here is when you click on the hamburger menu, you can adjust what it looks like if you want to go to light mode, dark mode, or have it set system wide. Now, if you've got it set on system and then you come up here and you switch off a of dark mode, it'll make it light mode to match around with all the other applications and with the system. So 
I think that is beautiful. They're definitely working hard on making this a very smooth and transitionable type of operating system that when you make changes, it goes across the board. Now, everything on here is going to be GTK4. GTK4 is running into some hiccups here and there, but they're really getting it polished down and really making it look good. So let's close out of this. Now, the next thing I want to go over is out of the box, it comes with GNOME Web. Now, this isn't one of the most used web browsers out there, but to me, I really like this web browser. It's minimal. It lets me do what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and look up eBuzz Central. Let's go ahead and open that up. And there you go. It pops right up. Let's go ahead and go to videos. And then you can F11 to go to full screen if you would like. And then you can just look around and do whatever you want to there. But I do like this web browser. You do got a hamburger menu over here. Now, I've noticed something over here. With the updated release notes, it now supports web extensions. And it's actually supposed to, when I click on the hamburger menu, it should show web extensions over here, and it doesn't. Now, if you're out there and you're using GNOME Web, and it's showing web extensions, please let me know about that in the comments below. Now, another thing that I like in GNOME is... You can just right click on the title bar and you can take a screenshot, hide it, restore it, move it, always visible on workspace, or you can move it to a workspace to the right. So I'm gonna do that. Now I'm on a regular workspace right here. So let's hit the super key and we can go over here and it is now over here with my OBS. So I can click on that. It'll bring it into focus. Now, if I wanna move it again, just right click, move it to workspace to the right. And then when I hit the super key, It'll be over here, and then I have an open workspace right here. So it makes things real easy to move around, and it gives you an easy way to adjust your workflow to how you want it and what you want to do. Now, one of the final things I want to go over, let's go ahead and hit the super key. Let's go ahead and close out of this. I want to cover the GNOME Software Center, so let's open that up. And they've made some improvements here. Now, if you download GNOME OS, Everything that you're going to download and use is going to be a flat pack. They don't have any repositories. Like I said, this is specifically for developers or for people that want to download it and see what a vanilla GNOME experience is like. Now, you can go over here. It'll show installed. And, of course, it'll show updates over here. Now, if you explore, let's go down here. Let's look for something like uh, Caden Live. Even though I have it installed, I'm going to go ahead and look for Caden Live. Now, if you click on Caden Live, let's click on that. It loads up your application details. Now, if you scroll down here, you're going to see it's got all this down here. Installed size, unsafe, desktop only, age rating. Why is this unsafe? You can just click on this now, and it'll bring it up. And it'll say it can access the internet. It uses a legacy windowing system, so it's saying you might have some issues with render or things like that. Rendering of the application itself, not rendering videos that you're making. Uh, full file system, read write access. So it's telling you right there, these two things red flag it and they mark it as unsafe. I kind of disagree with that. That's my personal opinion, especially since you're downloading it in a flat pack and it's going to be self-contained basically in a sandbox. But if you disagree with me, let me know. Then you can close that and then you can come down here. You can write a review. Uh, community built, you can go to their website from right here, donate, report an issue. And then another thing I like is if you click on this, it says Flathub, you click on this, this has got a much better, more professional looking layout right here. Flathub, dl.flathub.org, and then the flat pack icon right there. That's basically what I wanted to go over, everybody. I think GNOME is doing a great job at making things a lot more smooth, a lot less resource intensive and making it much easier for people to adjust their workflow around what GNOME 43 is going to offer. I really like the desktop environment. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, I used to be a real stickler about GNOME and really wasn't a fan because I thought it was really clunky. It just didn't feel intuitive. It didn't seem conducive to a good workflow. But the changes they've made over the past three releases I think is definitely something they should be applauded for. Now, if you're wanting to see GNOME and what it's supposed to be before a distro changes it all up, you can zip on over to os.gnome.org. I'll be sure to put that link in the description below. And then you can download it yourself. Take it for a test drive. I'm really impressed. I think they're doing a great job. And I, I really look forward to what this project has to offer in the future. 
and I look forward to see how distributions are going to utilize all these new updates and all these new beautiful ways to do things in GNOME and see how they're going to make them just shine inside their distribution. Do me a favor today. Please like this video. Likes are what keep videos like this in the YouTube algorithm. And if you find useful information in this video, there are people out there just like you that would love to have that information too. And I want them to be able to see it. So please like this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. And if you do like the channel and enjoy the content that I'm making, you can become a member right here on YouTube. Buy me a coffee, zip on over to PayPal, throw me a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.